I've gotten a number of calls in my life like this, and it's 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 one of the kind of fun things about this business. You know, they said we're doing this Beauty and the Beast thing for TV, and it has to be a beast. It has to be a, you know a horrifying thing that when you look at it, it's a beast. But women have to think he's like the sexiest thing alive kind of deal. I go, it's a sexy beast. It's got to be like a monster, but it has to be attractive to women. You know, I go, okay, well this is going to be interesting. <laughs> you know, and so I thought, well, what do I do? You know, and and I mean, almost right away thought. Again, this kind of feline thing. I mean, cats are attractive, you know. And I and I thought if we'd made him kind of a lion man kind of thing, we could give him a big mane of hair like a rock star kind of thing that could probably make him so he's an attractive, you know, attractive to women. And and I said to the people, the producers involved, they said, you know, it's going to be a pro you got to cast the right person for this because he's going to be wearing a makeup. <laughs> Five days a week or six days a week, or if you shoot for however long this series goes, and I said, it can't be like one of those guys that you know. Can you roller skate? Yeah, I can roller skate. You know, but then when it turns out he can't, you know, I said, I mean, he, you wear makeup. Yeah, sure, but on you know after the first week, because I don't want to do this anymore, you know. And so I said, I wouldn't mind being involved in the casting, just kind of besides looking for the right face, but you know, to see what I if I get a feeling about the person. And when Ron Perlman came up. I thought, well, I know this guy. He's worn makeups. I've seen him do stuff in makeups. I know he knows what he's getting into. So he kind of knows the job is dangerous when he took it kind of a thing, you know. So I really pushed for Ron. I'm saying, I, get this guy, get this guy. He's done. He's, you know, I think I can do something interesting on him. And he's, he, he knows he's worn these makeups, you know. So we get Ron, and when I do the first test on him, I find out he's allergic to half the stuff that I use, you know. <laughs> it's like, and he's got really, really incredibly sensitive skin, and I'm going, oh my God, I just pushed and, and you know, practically forced him to use this guy, and I, and, and I don't know if we're going to be able to make him up, <laughs> you know. So we made it work, you know, we found out what we could use on him that would hold the stuff on and not affect his skin. And in fact, he came out in the end, I think, with better skin than, than he went in with, you know. And what really surprised me though was I mean I think I've gotten more fan mail for the Vincent makeup than anything I've ever done and I got and so many women were so in love with Vincent you know and and Ron Perlman's agent you know came up to me once and said Rick you've worked a miracle I go never in my life did I ever imagine that Ron Perlman would be a, a, a sex symbol you know <laughs> it's like you know because I can't believe that you know <laughs> and that, and what was good for me was you know, like I said, actors a lot of times don't want to be covered up and be made to look more ugly. You know, well, you know, in in reality, I mean, we're, you know, we're making Ron Perlman a beast, but he, he was a, a, attractive to women this way in a way that he never was as his normal self. So he liked being in the makeup. You know, and he'd have the makeup on, he felt good. You know, he'd go out and stand outside the trailer pose and for the women to walk by. You know, so it, was, it made it a lot more palatable for him to go through this makeup process every day.